it's Halloween. I haven't got any Thomas stories to share with you all. Sorry, <laughs> I've been caught up making a university film. But I am working on some new models so that I can hopefully get back to making Thomas episodes again, particularly with the Scarlowy fleet and Stepney, of course. Whilst I've been doing that, I've been reminded of all of the horrendous model customs I've forced into this world in the past. Tugs and Thomas modelling is what got me into the hobby, so I've learned from a fair few mistakes growing up. Ones that I thought would be funny to look back on now, so that you guys can learn and succeed from where I've previously failed. Here's a look at all of the Thomas custom models I've made, or at least the ones I can remember. Like so many, one of my first models was a Hornby Thomas. I got a second one when it finally broke, and because they were so cheap and easy to find, I used it as a template for one of my first ever customs. I used the only blue acrylic I had around and just went with it. It's too dark for NWR blue, but as an alternate universe thing I thought it looked neat enough. It was ridiculously glossy though, and I messed up with the red lining a lot. But hey, it had a black running board now at least. It lasted like this for about a year, then I used it as a test dummy for another livery. Ignoring the fact that Hornby E2s actually exist in Southern Green, I crudely painted it in Maunsell Olive, again by hand if you couldn't tell. I don't know why I did this, Thomas never wore any Southern livery and I could have just bought another E2, but oh well, I've not bothered to do anything with it since. Oh, apart from one time when Harry got a newspaper cutting of Theresa May and stuck it on the front. Something I didn't notice for some time afterwards. She's still there to this day, dreaming of cornfields far away. I bought Twisted Tom's old Batman Thomas, still with remnants of the Adventure Begins paint scheme he'd used. As a way to try and weather it, I used mascara and spread massive blobs all over the model, with the thought process that afterwards it would be easy to wipe off if it all went wrong. Oh, thank goodness it can, because it looks awful. The cleaners at Farquhar Sheds should be fired if this is what they call decent. <laughs> Another cheap Hornby test dummy. Harry and I needed a Percy model for something? I can't remember, I think it was for his Put Upon Percy remake. But we ended up using an actual Hornby Percy for that, so honestly I have no idea. Okay, uh, what's it? Put Upon Percy, um, uh, Percy death scene, take one. Using cocoa powder. Either way, I remember being around his house with this army camouflage coloured spray paint and trying to cover up detail with the masking tape. It ended up drying really bubbly and honestly, if any child pointed to this and recognised it as Percy, I'd think they'd never seen the show. This model was used for spares, so I suppose Stunt Jump Joe didn't have it all that bad. Some years later, I finally got a Percy model of my own, using a 3D printed body shell made by Explosive Cookie, which I don't think he ever made public, so I'm grateful he let me have one. Fun fact, this is the exact same model that he used for trains, so it's quite cool that the Percy I have as a model and as a 3D trains model are exactly the same. It fits on a Hornby Pickett chassis, but Luke's own updated model is slightly more accurate in terms of the later book's Percy. This was printed in the cheap Shapeways plastic, which isn't the best when it comes to quality, and even after a fair bit of sanding, the surface is still pretty rough, and again, painting it by hand instead of using lining tape. So this little guy is patiently waiting for a repaint. The current livery is a little... dirty. Don't call me Daddy Percy! Continuing with the Farquhar fleet, here's a completely scratch-built Toby. I made this especially for Knights of the Round Turntable. The Hornby Toby is just an office block, and the Backman Toby was already rare at this point, so I made a quick mock-up just to film with. It's unpowered, but being hollow beneath the running board, it would be easy enough to fit some wheels. As with so many of my models, it's made from matchsticks, coffee sticks and cardstock, and the bell is a pen lid cut up. Served its purpose, but never intended as a fully detailed model. Another static model, again in that deep royal blue. This T9 is supposed to be Edward, but yes, it's really just one of those cheap magazine models that were available everywhere you looked in 2014. Harry and I bought it together with the intention being that we'd just share it out depending on who needed to film with it, until he eventually bought a Backman Edward from Bass T-Bone Music to go on his newly built Wellsworth layout. Needless to say, being static, we never really ended up using this Edward. Apparently, I was so in love with that blue that I did the same to Gordon. 
this was a Hornby Flying Scotsman which I pretty much butchered, but I kept it with the intention of using another Hornby Railroad model to make a double tendered version, much like the real Flying Scotsman's second USA tour being a success. And that never ended up happening. What's better than a two empty? Two two empties. In my freshest year at uni, I got pretty <sighs> bored. So to counteract that, I started doing more modelling, and Arthur was the first thing I finished. I was impressed with the newer Backman 2MT, so I bought one of the older tooling ones and painted it in red like Arthur, complete with the number he had in his concept art, which is the same as the one in red at the Keithley and Worth Valley Railway. Sadly, I butchered up the smokebox door trying to remove it, and never found a replacement, so the cheap paper faces will have to do until I can get a 3D print one for him. The lining was done by hand, but I was always intending to redo it with transfers someday. That never happened, and as reliable as he was, I sold the fish boy on to Harry, where he now lives by the quayside at long last. Another university repaint, this time with a Hornby Railroad N2. I love Ryan as a character, and I thought it would be nice to have such a dramatically different coloured engine in my collection. So Ryan it was. Learning from Arthur, I bought a wooden railway face for him, and managed to get the lining slightly neater. Then I made the mistake of using a very thick coat of cheap gloss varnish, which dried white and ruined the whole thing. I didn't like the simplicity of the model itself, so eventually sold him on, making sure to repaint the model first to get rid of those varnish stains. Thankfully, after a fair few years, I still had the original paint. As you'll probably know, I've been very lazy with some of my representations of various characters in my videos, going as far as slapping Spencer nameplates on a very obvious Dwight D. Eisenhower, and just having TARDIS Rescue record a few lines saying, so what, I can be BR Green if I like, who cares? Who cares? I never properly got a model of Duck, but I did have this poor old non-running pannier. I don't know what brain cells were on annual leave at the time, but I decided to paint it red. Not London Transport red, just in your face red. Wait, no, black. I, I want a pannier in BR black. Wait, no, no, both. Why not both? I, I don't know why I did this. <laughs> no, what if I put it in Phoenix Precision Improved Engine Green? It's far too dark to be Improved Engine Green, but maybe it'll look like the Railway Children pannier. Yeah. This poor model was victim to an indecisive child equipped with a paintbrush. Not Sodor related, but around the same time I also made this. It's a freelance industrial shunter I made for my sister, because she wanted an engine, and I let her choose what colour she wanted it and what to add to it. It's very simplistic, but that's all it was ever going to be. Can't for the life of me remember what she called it, so if you have any good sensible names, let me know. Going narrow gauge now, I waited so long to find a Backman Scar Lowy, so when the time came when I did get a second hand one from a friend, I didn't have the heart to repaint it. Amusing fact, I was volunteering on the footplate of number 65 at the Bluebell Railway, and got handed the Scar Lowy as we were running into the platform. Picking up a Backman model like a token exchange is something I thought I'd never do. I haven't customised Scar Lowy much apart from some etched nameplates, a ream painting buffer beam, and a brass ring round the funnel, as well as a set of season 4 faces for him. When I got Renaeus though, dear old lady, the paint, the face and the small cab windows, ugh, as soon as it arrived, into a nicer red it went. I snatched up Narrow Planet's Dolgokification kit when it came out, but I didn't have a metal saw to cut off Renaeus's um, funnel. When we were filming the Great Model Railway Challenge, I gave Renaeus to Luke so he could do the honours instead. A couple months later, I came back to volunteer at the Talus Lynn for the first time, and picked the model back up again. I'm pretty sure that's my model of Reneus as well, just, just saying. Cheers Luke! I think I might make Smudger next. Hmm. I got some name, number and works plates from Narrow Planet, and the Quarryman headboard too. Because Reneus was in John Lennon's original band, who knew? The name plates I got were too big, so uh, try not to notice those. It's not a perfect model by any means, I still want to get a proper firebox backhead, replace the driver's side wheel arch, spread out the buffers, fit larger cylinders and oil pots on the running board, but I'm happy enough for now. Years ago I also painted up Ertl Scarlowy and Reneus, in matching red with blue lining, with brass domes just for the fun of it. 
thinking about it, I also had a Bluebell Black Stepney and uh, made a couple of Thomas paint-ups, so if I can find photos of those, they'll be greeting you now. I get asked about this a lot, so for the other narrow gauge models that have appeared in my videos, Duncan I bought as he was, modelled by Sodor Modelling in Miniature, Rusty I'm still yet to get a new body shell for, as I keep mistaking the Backman one for an orange skittle. And Sir Handel and Peter Sam were made by the Jam Tram. I just stole them to film all in a spin. As I mentioned though, I'm slowly working on improving my Scarlowy gang, so hopefully I shall have to steal no more. On the topic of future projects, I also haven't mentioned the obvious character. I plan to make a separate video talking all about the modifications I've done to various Hornby Terriers over the years, because I've had quite a few. I'm still hoping to modify a new Stepney out of the new Hornby A1X tooling, so that'll be included too. Well, that's that little horror show done with. I was very young when a lot of these models were created, and that's no excuse but I'd like to think I've at least got slightly better over time. But I still have a long way to go when it comes to modifying, repainting, and weathering models. But hey, that's what life's all about. I mean, learning, not so much modelling, but if I can tell you one thing from what I've learnt though, it's to take your time with modelling, and never be impatient or rush a model. It's a slow hobby, but a rewarding one when things do go well. Happy Halloween, and thanks to everyone who asked to see more from my model collection. If you have any other recommendations of videos you'd like to see, let me know. <laughs> Fire! A big thank you to all of my Patreon supporters, particularly Alex Goodman, GBH Train, Donald Nine and Douglas Ten, D Zero Two Eight O Falcon, Sean Tempest, Kildane's Coven, Nat, and Sam Bennett.